Right, this is the next lesson in Unit 3 of Richard and John, Paper 2. And this lesson is very important because it does tend to come up quite often. It is a big part of Unit 3 and sets up the problems that John faces from 12.15 onwards. And we need to look at today why the barons turned against John. Why the barons felt it was necessary to turn against the King of England so that by 12.15 the barons had a list of rules that they wanted John to abide by. And to do this, we need to understand the four F's. So the good thing about this paper is we've got some very easy ways to remember. So why did people join the, th the Third Crusade? We've got the four R's. Why did barons turn against John? We've got the four F's. And if this were to come up, this would be a very, very good question. And two years ago, both of them came up, the four R's and the four F's. So first thing we need to understand is if you were a baron, what would keep you happy? Now remember, as I've mentioned in previous lessons, the barons were known as these tenants-in-chief who were second, who were underneath the king. And their main job was to provide the king with an army and to provide the king with advice. They were rich individuals who would expect the king to look after them in their role as a baron. So just pause the video here and just make a list. If you were a baron, what would keep you happy? So these are some of the things we should probably be thinking about. First thing, keeping land and wealth. Barons want to keep their land because land equals power and authority. Barons want to their family to be secure and safe within the country they're living in. The barons want trust. The barons want to have important positions in society and those positions would be given by the king. The barons would also want a significant success in war because if they're successful in war they'd be rewarded and they also want to be trusted by the king. And this is one of the most important things for the barons of England. Is that the king needed to show trust to his barons or the barons would feel... The barons potentially would feel less worthwhile to the king. The barons want to help run the country. But if the king doesn't trust his barons or has barons that he keeps close and others not, he isolates, that could be problematic. So these are your four Fs. These are the four factors why John's relationship with the barons got worse. Finance, favourites, fairness and France. Now one of the key terms that you need to know for this is arbitrary power. Because two years ago this question came up. It was the fact that uh, the main reason for the barons and John's worsening relationship was John's use of arbitrary power. And we didn't, and people, the biggest mistake people made was they just approached the four Fs. Whereas actually there's, there's examples of arbitrary power in all of the four Fs. So what does arbitrary power mean? It means that John could act in any manner he wanted without respect for the law or the barons. So basically, John acts in a selfish manner. We're going to go back to this term arbitrary power later on. But for the rest of this lesson, we're going to go through the four, the four Fs. And we're going to look at the evidence within all four of them. So the first one we're going to look at is finance. Now before we look at finance, you need to understand that John had a range of financial problems. So John faced a lot more financial issues than his brother Richard. And in the 13th, you know, 13th century, the situation was, wor was worsening. So there was a steady rise in prices. There was inflation, which lowered the value of the money that John had. So the money that John got was the same, but he could buy less, including the price of things like mercenaries, those foreign soldiers. There was a loss of revenue because John no longer had control of Normandy. Remember, he lost Normandy by 1204, and this was now in the control of Philip. John also found it difficult to fund a war with France, um, because he would have to pay for a lot more mercenaries, this was going to be difficult for John to reclaim Normandy unless he increased the taxes and more importantly increased the taxes to the richer individuals of the country which would be the barons which would upset them because barons expected John to be fair with his approach to taxing them. And also John spent a lot of money on pointless good goods. So for example in 1205 he spent £700 on robes that he wore for a Christmas feast. Now, if we put this into context, a knight's wage was £20 a year. So John's wasting money on Christmas robes when he could be buying more knights, paying for more knights 
to help him reclaim Normandy, which might help him become a much more viable and stable king. Now, just a little task here, summarising three lines why John needed to possibly raise taxes. Pause the video, and then we're going to look at what John did and why this upset a range of uh, individuals, especially the barons. So anger number one is finance. Now John made a range of financial decisions and there are some significant consequences that you need to think of. So firstly, sheriffs. Now some people might get this mixed up with sheriffs who, who are like law and order. But in the medieval England, sheriffs were people that collected taxes for the king. And sheriffs were put under significant pressure to collect more money from the counties of England. In 1207, John introduced a tax called the 13th where everyone had to pay a thirteenth of the value of their rents and movables to the king. So if you are a baron, he's going to demand a much more significant amount of you because you are going to have a lot more valuables to your name. So by their rents, it means the land that you have, and movables means what you own. So barons were taxed a significant amount. They were taxed the same as everyone else in the country. And the problem for this was, was that the thirteenth was actually introduced without the barons agreeing to it. This shows how John used his power arbitrarily because he didn't think about consulting the barons. He went behind their backs to, con to introduce this tax without asking them, which put the barons in a very vulnerable position. John also took large sums of money in the form of taxation and fines from the towns and cities. And he particularly demanded significant sums of money from the biggest towns, London and Lincoln where a lot of barons would also be based. John also made sure that the exchequer, the counting houses, worked hard to calculate exactly what individual barons owned. Their debts were added together in one lump sum and the crown seized the barons' land if they didn't repay the debts quick enough. So it's, a very, um, it's like a medieval example of can't pay, they'll take it away. If the barons didn't pay their debts quick enough, then John would have their land seized. That's going to put Baron's livelihood at risk, and it's going to cause anger towards John, as they expected John to look after them. And John restricted what people could do in the royal forest, so people were punished heavily if they used forest land to grow crops, and the heaviest fines were levied in Yorkshire and Northumberland. So that's what John did for financial aspects. Now for each of these, just want you to think about what consequences this could happen, or you could write a short paragraph explaining why financial decisions caused the barons to be upset with John. Pause the video here for five minutes and choose to do the table task or the paragraph task and then we'll move on to the next, the next aspect which we look at fairness. I'm sorry, favourites. So, if you have a favourite then you have someone, then you're basically favourites, it's like, it's like mon, uh, medieval favouritism. And barons didn't expect John to have favourites. Now, what I've got here is a range of, of paragraphs. And you need to finish the paragraph. So first of all, it says, John found it difficult to trust his barons. This meant that he tended to rely on those closest to him for advice. John rewarded these royal favourites handsomely. Now the consequence of this was that barons felt isolated by John. They thought that John wasn't treating them fairly. The fact that John kept a small group of barons close to him wasn't what John should have done. John should have treated every baron the same. But by having a group of favourites, it isolates barons and makes them angrier, which could cause them to spark later on. There was also a lot of jealousy concerning John's ministers and agents. They were hated because of their ruthless actions and also because of the rewards they gained from their actions. The leading barons in England expected the king to use his power of patronage to reward a wide circle of people, but John only rewarded those closest to him. Why would this scare people? Well, very simple. Barons were fearful of losing their land, and if John was rewarding people around him, then he might become more ruthless to the barons that fall out of favour. This again would be through forfeiture of land and violence towards people that were very close to John, which we'll look at later on. To make matters worse, some of, John, some of John's favourites were, were foreigners. 
So people like Peter de Roches, John's choice of the Bishop of Winchester, came from Touraine. Now why is this going to cause problems? Well, barons of England expected the patronage to fall to the barons of England. And the fact that foreign individuals like Peter de Roches were being given important jobs like bishops of Winchester meant that some barons again felt more isolated, felt like John wasn't sort of adhering to their demands, and the fact he had this close-knit group of favourites that he was going to favour, and it was very difficult for you to get into that circle of favourites unless John really thought you deserved it. So John's actions would have made the barons feel what? Pick five words and explain. Finance and favourites are very, very short. So we just need to understand that, that these are two short aspects. But again, favourites, is it arbitrary power? Is it going against the law? Or probably not. So this might be looking at other things. You could say that John put in um, foreigners in charge, like Peter de Roches. That is arbitrarily done, because he is choosing people where he should be choosing a wide circle of people from within the country. Now, fairness. There are two areas to look at with fairness. Now, what you've got to remember is barons wanted to be treated fair and for John to use patronage to look after them. And there's two occasions where John didn't show fairness. And this is, number one, the death of William de Bruyne and the plot to assassinate John in 1212. So the first one we need to look at is William de Bruyne. So William de Bruyne was a man who had served in Richard's army and he was really close to John at the start of John's reign in 1199. John rewarded William well and became one of the leading barons in England. William was made Lord of Bruyne in, um, in Normandy and also he had lands in Sussex and on the border of Wales. So William de Bruyne was a man who was favoured by John. He, at the start, was probably one of John's favourites. Now what you're going to see here is how quickly one of John's favourites could turn into an enemy, all because of money. So in 1202, John gave land to William de Broisey in Ireland. And William promised to pay John 5,000 marks for this, which he would pay a 1,000 a year. But five years later, in 1207, William had only paid 700 marks. John ordered William to hand over his sons until his debt was paid. Now William was chased from his lands and went into exile because he refused to hand over his sons. But William's wife, Matilda de Broyes, and his eldest son were not so lucky, and the following source tells you what happened to them. So over the eleventh day, the mother was found dead between her son's legs, still upright but leaning back against her son's chest as a dead woman. The son, who was also dead, sat upright, leaning against the wall as a dead man. So desperate was the mother that she had eaten her son's cheeks. They had clearly been tortured and starved to death. When William heard this news, not long after, he died of grief. So William de Broyes had gone from one of John's most trusted barons to an individual who had his wife and son kidnapped and starved to death and tortured. This showed that John was willing to turn against anyone who basically didn't adhere to their word. Now while the barons felt that John acted unjustly and cruelly, there was little chance of them getting justice as John couldn't really be punished. But the treatment of some of the most important men showed that John was willing to hurt anyone, no matter how close they used to be, which led to some barons to plot against John. Some barons felt fearful, thinking, well, what if he does it to them next? By John doing things like this, he showed that he wasn't willing to have that relationship with his barons like he should have done. Which leads to 1212. Now just to put it into context, um, before 1212, John faced lots of threats from William the Lion, um, who was the King of Scotland, and a rebellion in Wales led by Llewellyn. But John dealt with both of these very successfully. So in 1209 he marched north, forcing William the Lion to accept peace terms, uh, accepting John as his overlord and handing over his two daughters as hostages as a guarantee of future good behaviour. And in 1211, John also attacked Llewellyn's principality in Snowdonia, and he forced the Welsh to retreat, and Llewellyn was forced to sign a peace treaty. He also had to surrender his son to ensure good behaviour in the future. So John was really good at keeping peace within England by being quite reckless and forceful. But in the summer of 1212, John was planning a new campaign 
to strengthen his hold on Wales, when to his surprise he learnt of a plan to assassinate him. So Llewellyn was in a league with some of the barons to try and kill John. So Llewellyn actually put a plan in place with two of the leading barons, two of John's closest barons, Fitzwalter and Devesky, both very powerful barons who held lands and knights. It was said that both men were angry at John's financial demands and John's attempts to seduce their female relations. The two of John's closest barons had planned to kill him. They, they put a plan in place with the leader of Wales, Clewellyn, and the plan was to either murder John or leave him in Wales and let the Welsh kill him. They then intended to elect a new king, but once John found out, he dismissed the baron's army and brought in mercenaries to protect him. John also marched north and confiscated Dubesky's castle, and Fitzwalter fled to France for his own protect protection. Now, what this does, it has lots of consequences. And I've just put a, a small task at the bottom here. You've got some questions that you can answer, but this task here, which of the following do you think are true? John decided to forgive Fitz, uh, Fitzwalter and Dubesky as they are so powerful. Do we think John forgive them? No. John became more reliant on his favourites and foreign soldiers. The distrust for his own men grew. Yeah, of course it's going to. John decided to go on holiday to France and chill. No. John realised how unpopular he was. So in 1213, he got rid of some of the most unpopular sheriffs. No, John doesn't care how unpopular he is. As long as he's getting money in, that's all he cares about. John realised it was his own fault and gave Vesky and Fitzwalter a huge amount of power. No. John realised that being in an argument with the Pope was not so wise, so he began to reconcile with the Pope, especially as he may have needed support. Good. This is a real key point. This event here led to John realising that he might need more support from the Pope in the future. John went to Richard's grave and asked for help. No. John decided not to king, be king anymore. No. Philip heard of what happened and it encouraged Philip to continue to plan his invasion of England. Yes, which is another reason why John had to make amends, reconciliation with the Pope. So that's the plot to assassinate John. And these are all really key to understand the fairness. All right, John acted very unfairly and cruelly towards some of his key barons. And the example of William de Broglie's and plot to assassinate even though the plot to assassinate John was a plot against him, it basically pushed the barons further away and brought his favourites even closer. Right, now the anger number four, failure to reclaim France in 1214. So John had been spending a significant amount of time raising money to try and reclaim uh, Normandy. Now what we've got here... Why was Normandy so important? This is just revision questions based on what we've done in the past. Why was Normandy important? Trade, you know, finance, invasion, all really important. How had John been getting the money to do it? Well, he was making a significant amount of money through things like the 13th. If you were a baron, what's the only thing you would accept with John's plan? Well, the only thing you'd accept is success. So, John actually felt like he was really, he was in a great position at this time. Now he thought this because of tactics, money, support of most of his barons and alliances. Now, you just need to match the correct ones. So tactics, money and mercenaries, support of most of his barons and alliances. So John gained a huge amount of money due to taxes he raised. He could afford an army of skilled and well trained mercenaries. John's plan was attack Philip on two fronts, forcing him to divide his forces. John had formed alliances with Otto of Brunswick and the Counts of Bologna, Flanders and Holland. These people were near Normandy. And despite some opposition to the campaign in England, John was joined by a large number of barons as well as his household knights. Now if we have a look here, this is what John's plan was. John was going to attack from one side at La Rochelle, move in and it would force Philip to split his army, which would make Normandy easier to hopefully attack. And then he was going to have another individual, Salisbury, who was going to come from another side, come through Flanders, and then Philip would have to split his army again, which again, hopefully they defeat, which makes it easier to move in on Normandy. 
it didn't go so well. And it led to John basically failing to capture Normandy. So in John's battle, at first things went well. He got lots of castles, he gained control of Poitois, and in June he crossed the Loire and reached Angers. But he was still 80 miles away from Normandy. This is where Philip sent his son to halt the advance of John, but John's allies weren't prepared to risk everything in one battle. John was weakened, he had to head south, leaving behind his weapons, his tents, his clothes and his valuables. Louis retook the castles that John take, uh, took, and by July... John was back where he started, La Rochelle. John had failed, and everything now depended on Salisbury in the north. So John, he started well, but then Louis pushed him right back, and John failed. Salisbury, on the other hand, was taking part in the Battle of Boims in 1214. So John's allies in the north, if they failed, this whole thing would fail. It was the most important battle of John's life, and he wasn't there. He was 400 miles away. John's allies had 1,400 knights and 7,500 infantry, and Philip had 1,400 knights and 6,000 infantry. The battle took place outside the village of Boims, and the battle was very close. German soldiers who were on John's side dragged Philip from his horse and were seconds from killing him, but a daring rescue saved Philip's life. And with Philip back on his horse, the French began a counter-attack, and Otto was forced to flee. The Count of Flanders lost his horse, and fought on foot, and the Earl of Salisbury, the leader, was taken prisoner, which meant that John's attempt at gaining Normandy was basically over. This triggered the barons to rebel, because the barons had been paying taxes for ten years for this event, for this outcome, for John to reclaim Normandy, which he never did. Now, exam practice. This is the question that we looked at two years ago. King John's use of arbitrary power was the main reason for his worsening relationship with the barons in the years 1209 to 14. How far do you agree? So in this question, you can see this candidate has already listed a range of things. Okay. In this paragraph, you basically have to do, agree, John's use of power was the reason for his bad relationship, disagree, it was other reasons, and you've got a range of things here. This will help you with an exam practice. So go through here, either make a table or colour code it. Agree that John's use of arbitrary power led to poor relationships. So basically, John did the things without respect to the barons or respect for the law. Disagree, it was other reasons. This is the task that you can pause the video and this will really help you with that exam question. If you want a bit more help, this is a model of an exam question. So firstly, I agree with the statement due to the use of King John's treatment of his favourites. John had many favourites, many which did, did, didn't include the barons. John frequently used his power arbitrarily to only benefit himself and those who liked, who whose he liked most. He rewarded them frequently and pushed those not in his favourites further away. As a consequence, barons lost trust in John due to him not respecting his barons. John had favourites partly because he didn't trust the barons and he felt he could only trust certain people, including Peter de Roches. To make this paragraph better, you could probably talk about the assassination attempt which made John push his favourites, uh, bring his favourites closer and push the barons further away. This is going to be really important that we understand, so it's absolutely vital that you watch this, go over it, and ask any questions if you don't have an idea about how King John fell out with the barons. Key thing is 1209 to 1214. So use this slide to finish the lesson. Was it his use of arbitrary power? Well, yes, I think it was. If you want to take it further, add two pieces of evidence, and this will help you overall with this concept of why did John fall out with the barons. And the next lesson. We're going to look forward and look at the Barons' Rebellion. How did the failure of France, failure of Normandy, lead to a rebellion in 1215?